G'day and welcome to Camper, this week in beautiful central Queensland. The aptly named Discovery Centre at Ubobo is a great location from where to base yourself for a number of day drive tours through the Boyne Valley to the west of Gladstone. Not only does the town boast a general store and all the amenities you could possibly want in a country retreat, but the Discovery Centre is also the destination for a number of events across the calendar. This particular weekend, it's the Boyne Valley Country Music Festival, which is a must-do event in its own right. But my mate Daryl and I are venturing out today in search of gold. Well, at least an old gold mine, because there's plenty of it up in them there mountains. Well, this will be another well-spent day in the Boyne Valley with my good mate Dags. There's two big blokes cruising around in a black car, uh, learning a little bit about the place, and, and no better person to be with on a hysterical tour. Dags, you're a walking, talking encyclopedia. Oh, no, I, know, I know a bit. You know, I know a bit. But we know a bit to get us into trouble, a bit of, to get us out of trouble. But oh, I never let the facts get in the way of a good story <laughs> on camper. Never do. But you can't go prospecting before you've had a good cup of coffee. Kirsten and her mum have created a coffee and cake gift house that is simply a must stop if you're heading out this way. Hear that noise? It's one you don't hear very often in the Boyne Valley. That's the sound of a coffee machine, real coffee. Take a look at this. Tell me a bit about how this all came to be. Oh, well, it was always a dream. Initially, it was a grocery store, and I bought probably 10 years ago now. But my dream was the coffee shop. Um, and now, yeah, I'm able to serve up cakes, coffee, milkshakes, and... Um, but it's it beautiful. You've got, clearly got a knack for it. I guess from the lolly jars and, you know, the way, the, the beautiful layout of this place to the pretty dresses and the lovely knickknacks that you can buy, it really is, it's, you know, it's something that people would drive a long way for to come and visit you. Well, they do. Once they've been once, they come out again. So once I have a customer come in the shop once, whether they're from Tenham Sands, Agnes Waters, um, Gladstone, and they do, they see it on Facebook and say, we just had to come out and have a look at the shop. So um, everyone loves it. Everyone's just got a look of delight on their face as they walk in the door. Um, and the I'm coffee saying, is fantastic. Oh, mum makes fantastic coffee, yeah, doesn't she? Really good coffee. <laughs> if Everything... you come in for coffee, make sure mum's behind the counter. She makes the best coffee. Everything about this place is absolutely wonderful. Kirsten and Kirsten's Cottage, I salute you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I could sit at Kirsten's Cottage and drink frothy cappuccinos all day. But that's not very manly, so it's time to get a wriggle on and discover a bit about the region. We are back on the Goldmine Trail. It all started back in 1853. A lady by the name of Mrs Brennan found a three ounce nugget on the northern slopes of the Boyne Range. As you'd imagine, it took a while for word to get out, but ten years later the Calliope Gold Rush began. The population of the small town of Many Peaks rose to over 3,000 people. Can you imagine? Five hotels, a hospital, stores, cordial works, a cafe. There was even a brass band providing entertainment and a horse-drawn cab transporting passengers around the town. These days, the building with the most traffic in town is, of course, you guessed it, the pub, with a very grand name. In its first life in Gladstone, it was called the Railway Hotel because it was next to the railway. Now there was no railway line out here, so it became the Grand Hotel as it stands today. The railway dam and gravity-fed water tank used to water steam-driven trains are the only other signs of a bygone era, and a day-use picnic and facilities area has recently been constructed nearby. It's a pretty good piece of engineering to get those train lines all the way up through the doors range. And obviously the council have seen some significance in, in you know, keep making this a place of, yeah, exactly. of reverence because they've built this wonderful facility. The park that's been, it was a council project to, to sort of get people to have a look and see what preserved the history that's involved here. It's from here that our road trip takes us off the bitumen and onto the gravel, past grand homesteads and fat cattle. Pretty as a picture, the Boyne Valley is a beautiful place for a day drive. The closer we get to Glassford Creek, the more rugged the drive gets. And while it's not a difficult one, you will need a high clearance four wheel drive vehicle. Then, in the middle of nowhere, a clearing ahead, and we have clearly arrived at a place that would have some stories to tell. I'm 
absolutely amazed. There are a couple of tall remaining brick stacks, a boiler and what is left of what must have been a large scale operation. This whole area here was, would have been an area of intense activity with lots of heat because you know that they had a plug hole in the bottom of this furnace that they'd, that they'd fill up with a bit of clay the size of a Coke can. You know, you plug it in there and then they'd pull it all out and the, and the material would, would flow into these ingots and that sort of thing. When they closed this down, they, they broke the furnace out, okay? So, and all this material went all the way over, right across here, and you can see the material across here on the ground in here. So, and it went over to, that bank there is actually a slag heap. So it's all made of material from this particular furnace. And it gives you an indication of how much work went on here, that they've been able to create their own mountain, if you like. Well, it is. It's just Molten huge. Rock. Are we going to have a look at it? Yeah, let's go and have a look. Think about the amount of labour that went into creating this. Well, yeah, that gully there, that would have to drop down probably another 30 metres down the bottom. But you, can yeah. see, you can see the copper and everything in the rock. Mm. So, yeah, so this has all been thrown here by somebody or amazing. some people. Yeah. yeah, it's just amazing. Hey, we, hey, hey, I think I found some gold. Some gold? Oh, sorry, that's fool's gold. Yeah, that, that would be fool's gold. It would be too, look at that. Glassford Creek Mine and Smelter was for a time around the turn of the 19th century a very big operation. Schools, Chinese market gardens, pubs and other infrastructure supported the miners and smelter operators as they went around their daily business. I give you perfectly good sausages and look what you do to them. You know, I, I, I can't understand, mate. You call yourself a, 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 a chef and you made it actually dog's breakfast to these things. It's not very good for TV, you know. It's not, it's not. You're absolutely right. Thank goodness that this is not a cooking segment. Thank goodness we're going to be chewing them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they are awful. Look at that. They are the most badly cooked sausages They ever. still smell good, though. I don't know. Stuff. Once we put the train smash on them, we'll be fine, mate. Well, mate, you take me to all the best places. It's pretty cool, eh? Cheers. Snag for lunch. Historical site. I'm not what the peasants are doing today. After a feed and another history lesson from Daryl, we decide to look for the underground mine's entrance. This road up here would have been um, would have been the. the the trail I suppose they took for the raw material to dump in front of the crushing plant where that stack is. After only a few hundred yards walk, the mine reveals itself to us. You know, you can see the timber in there, drag all the, all the ore out through here and go over, the, over to, the, to the furnace and then throw it in the mullock heap. And obviously the, the floor's all filled in with sediment. It has over time. You know, it, it, it was probably much deeper than this as well, they'd probably come out. Yeah, yeah. And they could have had railway tracks out through here or yeah. whatever, you know. Yeah, amazing. A great deal of the tactile history of the Boyne Valley was swallowed up by the construction of the Yawonga Dam, which supplies water to the town of Gladstone. But if you take your time to do some research and have a good look around, you'll find plenty of historical information and sites to visit. The Gladstone Region website is a great place to start looking. The Yabobo Discovery Centre is a terrific spot to unhitch the van and spend a few days exploring the magical Boyne Valley. And if you're in the market for a new van or motorhome, check out the range of good time spaceships at brisbanecamperland.com.au. Well, Daryl Branthwaite, magnificent weekend here, mate. Gladstone Region, the Boyne Valley. You said it'd be great and you've delivered on all levels. Good on you, Dino. Thanks very much for coming along. It's been wonderful having you here and, and introducing you to your Bobo and the Boyne Valley. Yeah, yeah, the Boyne Valley Country Music Festival. We've had such a great day today. We've visited, of course, Crimpet Tops. And today, that was just absolutely magnificent. Yeah. Checking out the historical... Glassford Creek, yeah. Glassford Creek, incredible. Put it on your list of places to go, you Bobo, the Discovery Centre, great spot for an overnight stay or a weekend or maybe a week. Cheers, mate. Good idea.